Hey, my name is Byron. I'm a regular user of the Chehalis Western Railroad Trail. Uh, I've used it since before it was even made. As a distance runner, I used to run on it when it was just the railroad trail. But uh, I really appreciate the work the county has done and the cities to make this a wonderful place for people to ride, to walk, to run, to enjoy nature and see the beauty of this environment. So really thanks to all the people who make this happen. Hi, I'm Commissioner John Hutchings. I've decided to head down to Thurston County Public Works to talk about some of the parks and recreation options we have right here in our county, our capital county. Let's go take a look. So we're now here with uh, parks manager, the legendary, Carrie Hibden. Carrie, thank you so much for taking time. You're welcome, uh, sure. today on, uh, uh, on this Thurston uh, County Connection, talking about all the parks and the amenities that we have in Thurston County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is for the folks at home, uh, or wherever you're watching, is to go through the history of some of the parks we have uh, and some of the amenities they may or may not have, what people can expect and such. Mm -hmm. And as a parks manager, you've done this for how many years? Almost 30. So I was not kidding when I said legendary. Well, okay, I appreciate that. So I, I mean that. Thank you. Yeah, you're a good man. So please, give us an overview of the parks and the trails system. You bet. So we have a robust parks and trails program here in Thurston County. Um, we have 36 miles of developed trail. That means paved uh, trails that are used for both recreation and transportation. Um, and then we have five fully developed parks in our system. We're going to talk specifically about a few of those different parks. Um, one of them is Kinneydale Park. It's located on Black Lake um, on Fairview Road. And Kinneydale Park is, is a great example, and these are park terms, but it's what's called passive use or active use. Passive use is you show up there to use the park to enjoy nature and, uh, and, and nature. Uh, an active use would be a more programmatic use where you go there for a specified event like playing soccer or doing something active. Mm. We really blend those uses at Kinneydale Park. We have an active swimming area. We have athletic fields out there, but then we also have nature trails picnic shelters, picnic tables, of course, so people can do both, either passive or active. And the, the swimming piece is separated between adults and kids, or bitty kids as well? or it, It's not. Informally it is. We have a, a kiddie area in front of the docks, which is a maximum of about three foot deep out there. And we do have a program in the park called Safe Kids, and so we provide life jackets for kids. If someone were to show up, our recommendation is people bring your own. Yeah. Bring a life preserver uh, for your children. However, if they don't, um, we do provide those as well. And is there a lifeguard on duty? There's not. It's swim at your own risk out there. Um, we so we prefer they bring their own uh, life jacket, but also we prefer they watch their children. Absolutely so. I mean, safety is key among any of our uses out in our parks. It's our number one goal, it really is, to provide clean and safe sites uh, for the public and the visitors to our area. But safety is something that we take uh, at the highest order. Well, I'm going to guess at Kennedale that uh, there's no boat. I know it's a boat launch in, in there, because I've used that in the past, but there's, there's no boating access to Kennedale Park then, where you have motorized boating mixing with? I'm glad, I'm, I'm really glad you asked that because the boat launch is actually run by the state and it's located next door to Kennedale Park. And so there's an active boat launch, a lot of people use Black Lake for boating. Yeah. We do not have boat access in Kennedale Park. We have a floating log boom, or a floating swim line rather, that delineates the swimming area out there so boats cannot approach that. And there's a speed limit out there on the lake and you can only go 10 miles an hour within a certain distance of that floating line to make sure that all the kids and everybody using the swimming area is safe. Okay, is there, is there a specific history to Kennedale? It's the uh, county purchased it from the Girl Scouts in 1988. Um, we opened it for use in 1998. And uh, we've just seen a lot of, just a lot of great use out there of all the types that I mentioned previously. Um, it is interesting that once it hits about 82, 85 degrees, look out, that swimming area is, really has a lot of people enjoying it out there. Um, and it's close enough in town uh, to be considered urban. That's right. 
but it's far enough away out of town where a lot of I mean, there's a lot of people throughout the county that use that use Kenny Dale. Absolutely, and um, we're a regional provider in a county park system. And really, th what that means is it's exactly like it sounds. We provide for the whole region. That means people can come from Yelm. They can come from as far away as Bucota, Lacey, Olympia, Tumwater, of course. So it's not just county residents. And so do we charge, does the county charge a fee to have people go out there and play and swim? Never. We do not. We do not have a parking fee. We do not have a use fee for our parks. Um, the only fees associated with parks right now is if somebody wants to reserve a picnic shelter, we have a lodge building at Kennedale Park, which was the old uh, mess hall for the, the, Girl the Girl Scouts. Scouts. Mm -hmm. And that's been converted into a lodge. People use it for meetings, family reunions, uh, parties, all kinds of things. So you can reserve a picnic shelter or a, a lodge out in our parks um, for a real nominal fee. And all they have to do is call the office. It's a very simple process or go to thurston-parks.org and they can look that up and do an online reservation as well. Thurston-parks.org? That's correct. And that gets them right to the... Uh the portal, wherever they need to go to for the parks to That's correct. get all the information. That's correct. There will be a tab that says how to reserve a shelter. We get about 400 a year, 400 park reservations slash special events. A lot of people are now choosing um, to have special events out on the trails as well. And that could be a fun run. It could be a, a nature activity. It could be a school group, all kinds of different uses. But people are frankly just right now starting to realize that, wow, these trails in some uh, respects are a linear park as well. And so they're having activities out there as well. Not very many people are aware that trails could be, uh, can be reserved. Absolutely so. If we have a 250 person event happening and it's going to be a really nice weekend and a lot of the just general public are going to be out there, we have to consider that and make sure that we don't have a conflict in use so everybody can use the site. And the, and the trail then, as it heads through Tonino, mm -hmm. where does it end? Just outside of Tonino okay. and uh, at Crowder Road right there. Okay. We actually go a little bit beyond the way that the trail system, the Rails to Trails program was designed um, or anticipated to, to uh, uh, work would be that they network. And so if the county owns 21 miles of Chehalis Western Trail that's developed and 14 and a half miles of Yelm Tonino Trail that's developed, that it doesn't stop there. We have different municipalities, different uh, jurisdictions like in Lewis County, Pierce County, we need to talk to our partners out there and make sure that our trails line up when we get to our border, when they come closer to us, because we do anticipate that those will network um, statewide and, and nationwide. And there is a move afoot uh, to connect all these trails, so it's big, one big long trail. That's absolutely right. And a lot of people see these smaller sections and think, well, it's great, you know, and it's neat for recreation, but, you know, it really doesn't do what I need to do to travel or to go large distances. But um, it's really working quite well as designed, which is let's build these small sections and that gives the incentive to start networking them together. People use them, people realize the value in these trails. For, and again, I think it's really key to mention they, in a couple different ways. Recreation, absolutely. For health and wellness, you know, getting kids out of the house after school, off the computers, out playing, being healthy and active. And then also for transportation, that re reduces carbon footprint in the county. It reduces congestion. Um, and again, it's health and wellness combined with their commute. And so it's really a win-win. The, uh, the Chehalis Western Trail runs right through Tonino. Mm -hmm. And so it's right adjacent to a Tonino City Park. That's right. But it's a county trail, That's so right. it's a county park That's trail. Right. That's right. And so we work closely with the city of Tonino. Then. It's, it's a, a great example of partnerships, and uh, we have a great relationship with the city of Tonino. A good way to explain it is the Chehalis Western Trail runs roughly north-south through our county, right through the middle of it. Uh, the Chehal or the Yelm Tonino runs east-west, and so it makes a big upside-down T through the community. Um, and it's, uh, again, 21 and a half miles, starts all the way at Woodard Bay and goes all the way to the junction with the Yelm Tadino Trail, which runs east-west. Well, you uh, are responsible, in my opinion, um, working as closely as you do with uh, Tadino Mayor Wayne Fournier mm -hmm. in putting this whole thing together. It's a great example of a partnership, and you know, you're giving me way too much credit. I would give it on to, to, to Mayor Wayne Fournier. Has done a fantastic job, very ambitious. 
Um, his outreach has been wonderful. As resources are tight in parks, and, and they are tight in parks, specifically for the maintenance of parks, um, it's very tough. That's not just a Thurston County problem, that's been citywide, statewide, nationwide. Ever since the big economic downturn in 2009, it's been very difficult to recover funding for parks maintenance. So these partnerships help in a lot of different ways. That's one of them. It allows us to do more with less. Um, they take care, in Tonino, they take care of the trail through the city of Tonino, all the way to the city limits. And that's unbelievably helpful to us. Yes, it and is. So, I've seen the budget. Yeah, and, and so we get, we get a great benefit from that. Tonino gets a great benefit because they have this amenity that's bringing people into their community. So you talk about the economic advantage of the trails. People are really just now discovering that. Um, they come into Tonino, well, they're, they're buying hamburgers and pizza and different things that the town has to offer. They're spending time there. You know, I have ridden uh, the trail from Southeast Olympia from about Spooner's Farm all the way up to Woodard Bay uh -huh. Uh -huh. on my bicycle uh -huh. year, years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was quite it was quite an exercise, mm -hmm. and it was fun and beautiful. Uh, <laughs> that's right. And, you know, it, 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 it is good because, yes, it is exercise, of course. The, uh, I would say, though, that with our trails, um, as far as difficulty of a ride compared to the roadway systems, the trails are typically easier. The grade is flatter because they were railroad corridors, so we don't have a whole lot of this. We have some of this where we wind a little bit, and right. people like that, but we don't have a whole lot of elevation changes. We are ADA compliant with our trail system, so for our trail heads and so forth, for example, and uh, we see that type That's of activity. Nice to know too. It, it's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's very gratifying to see all the different types of uses we see out there on the trail. People come out there and pick berries if they're out there on the trail. We don't use any chemicals along our trails. Huh. Yeah. Now I sit on the Transportation Policy Board, mm -hmm. and it amazes, you mentioned it early on, that that's not only a recreational trail, but people do use that for commuting. Absolutely. And there's a fair amount of people that use that trail for commuting every day, rain, uh, rain winter, snow, whatever, they're, they're on that trail. You bet. And I didn't realize that. You bet. Uh, and so it's, it's widely, uh, widely utilized. It really is, and uh, ever increasing, I would say. Um, and again, as the trails came into existence here in our community, we had some of the bicycle, bicycle advocates and uh, walkers and so forth who are uh, really into this, going out there and using these initially. Well, what, what's happened is now people start to recognize, again, just the value of these things. And it's uh, curious to note that, uh, uh, or interesting to note, that one of the first things you'll see in a real estate ad typically is close access to the Chehalis Western Trail because yeah. they've realized what an asset this is to be able to go out there after dinner and take a walk to go to work, to commute to the downtown area, uh, um, for typical shopping on a weekend Take and so forth. Uh -huh. Because I've mentioned the Thurston County Trails, but it is interesting to note that right there near Pacific Avenue in Lacey, there's a roundabout in the trail system. It's the first one in the state. And we intersect with the city of Lacey and the city of Olympia. That's their Karen Frazier Woodland Trail, the Lacey Woodland Trail, the Olympia Woodland Trail. But they all come together. It's kind of the nexus of the trail universe here in Thurston County is that roundabout. And Thurston County's Chehalis Western Trail is really a backbone for the regional trail network here in our community. Other trails kind of run to that. And that, that's done by design. Again, get people to these larger collectors and so they can move all the way uh, through the community. The goal has always been to, cl to connect every community with the Puget Sound. And we're pretty close. We're pretty darn close. Again, people can get on a tra our trail system in Yelm and go into downtown Olympia. They ride the uh, Yelm Tonino Trail, hook up with Chehalis Western, then get on the Woodland Trail. There are bike maps out there that are provided by Thurston Regional Planning Council. Yeah, you see they're coming out with another one, an they, updated one. They are, and it's a great one. And it, on that are you? It's, yep. it's, it's a great one, that new map, and it has uh, proposed trails on there as well, and so it gives people a real big picture of what we have and what we aspire to. So how do people get their hands on one of the trail books or trail maps? Well, you can uh, either you can call, you, call, you can, you can call Thurston County Parks, 786-5595, of course, that's area 360. 
or you can go to the uh, thurston-parks.org and you can get one there. You can call in and we can send you one because we want people to have these things. We have our own brochures that are available at every uh, uh, parking spot for the Chehalis Western and Yom Tenino, trailheads rather. In, in our information booths, we have flyers on the trails, and it's really a snapshot. One side of it is Shalis Western, the other side is Yelm Tenino, and it gives rough mileages and so forth, and some of the rules and conditions out there. So now let's jump and go all the way up to Burfoot Park, because mm -hmm. Burfoot is out of the area. Mm -hmm. It's a ways, not that far, but it's a ways. Mm -hmm. And tell us about Burfoot Park in the Northeast. The famous Burfoot Park. It's, uh, it's, it's been our most consistently heavily used park since the late 70s. It was developed in the late 70s um, and it was purchased from the Burfoot family in part and then a couple other parcels came in to make up the 67 acres that is Burfoot Park. But it's on Bud Inlet and um, the whole park essentially flows in a trail system down to the shore to allow people to get down to the shore of Bud Inlet. And so from the Olympia city limits we're about uh the Salmon Club or uh, Priest Point Park, how far out is it? I think it's Another six, seven, eight miles? And I'm going to tax myself. I think it's 6.8 miles oh. from downtown Olympia to out Boston Harbor. Okay. Good signs out there, the brown and white recreation signs that say you're going the right way, keep going. <laughs> and then, of course, we have a great big sign out front and uh, very heavily used park. We get a lot of reservations out there. We have three picnic shelters and many, many weekends. They're all booked all day. Um, just with phenomenal people up there, fee. a nominal fee, and people go out there and just have a great time. And again, it's anything from family reunions to these larger events that they really need to be able to secure Full, a venue. Uh, restroom uh, amenities, ADA compliant? Full ADA compliant restroom at Burfoot Park. We have fresh water, of course, trash receptacles. We compost and do recycling out at Burfoot Park as well. And we were the first in the state to do that. That's correct. That's correct. And we're a, we're a capital county. That's right. That's right. I love that. Yeah, we should be in the forefront. Uh, and sufficient You've parking. A absolutely. A lot of parking at Burford. I don't have a count, but lots of parking out there. And no overnight camping. Any of our parks. Thank none you. None of our parks. That's, that's something I might not have mentioned. Thank you. Um, none of our parks. They're day use only. Um, the gates close are, at sunset. They close at dusk. At uh, dusk. And uh, the reason we keep it dusk, that's a different time all year round. That could be 4.30 in the afternoon. It's pitch black in October, November. And it could be 9.45 right yeah. now. So uh, we keep at dusk. They open by 7 o'clock in the morning. And... Uh, yeah, all of our parks, same hours. So how many acres do you reckon uh, Burfoot is? Do you know? 67 acres. 67 acres. It, it, it is. Right down to the water. It really, it does, yes. Mm -hmm. With trails throughout. Absolutely. A couple miles of trails out there. Beautiful nature trails at Burfoot Park. Yeah, we'll get ready now because people are going to hear this and they're going to start heading that way. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, that's great. Is it like Priest Point Park where it is so treed where it can be like 20 degrees cooler in the summer? Absolutely. Than outside? You bet. You bet. It really is. And uh, um, it's, it's a wonderful example of the Northwest. And I love when people go to Burfoot Park who are from out of our region. It's a great example of what the Northwest experience is. You walk through those trees and they just tower over you and, and you're kind of walking through a tunnel, if you will. Yeah. And they marvel at the type and the size of the trees that we have. Um, we see that everywhere in our system, but Burfoot's a great example of that. So it's far enough out uh, from mm -hmm. uh, the, the southern tip of Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it goes down to the, uh, to the water, is it really that impacted by the tide when the tide is out? Mm -hmm. It we, still is? We do have some tidal movement out there, some significant tidal movement out there. Um, it doesn't really block off the beach from public access, but it, it uh, will impact the amount of be beach that you have available for you. So, you know, if the tide's way out, you have a great big large beach to use. If it's way, way in, well, it minimizes that a little bit, but it just changes the experience. They're both great. When the tide's way out, you know, we have a lot of kids and a lot of folks out there doing their shellfish thing, and then when we have yeah. the tide way in, people come for other reasons, and beautiful. some of that is just respite, but uh, different uses all year round. In the winter, it's beautiful out there, too. So it's I amazing. may have missed it if you said it, but what what is the location of Burfoot? How do people get there? It, if you go on Boston Harbor, or uh, East Bay Drive, rather, mm -hmm. will turn into Boston Harbor right. Road. So if you get on East Bay Drive and simply drive out 6.8 miles, you're going to see it right on the main road. And it's at 6927 Boston Harbor Road. 
And uh, if you get to the Boston Harbor Marina where there's a boat launch and so forth, you've gone just a little bit too far, but you would have had to drive past a great big sign that's blue yeah. and white in color that says Burfoot Park. Yeah, let's move all the way southeast now yeah. to uh, the Deschutes Falls Park. Wow, yeah. Tell me about that one. Okay, this is, I could do this all day because we, go, we, we change regions in the, in the county talk about different facilities, they're all unique, they all have different ecosystems, they're wonderful. Deschutes Falls is amazing. Out of all the sites that we have in Thurston County, that it one, is the king. It really, it requires no or explanation queen. from me. <laughs> it, it really, I mean, uh, if I'm, uh, if, if we were to try to impress somebody with this site, all we need to do is take them out there and say, take a look. And it speaks for itself. There is a waterfall, hence the name Deschutes Falls, there's a gorge that goes through. The waterfall comes down into a gorge, and we have about a 90-foot drop in a couple areas. Um, and we have, of course, safeguards in place, and we do ask people uh, to respect those in terms of we have signage which directs to you how to use the park, where to use the park, where to view the park. When we say safeguards, you're about fencing and that's barriers and such. And, and signage, that's right. To protect that, people get it from themselves. Absolutely right. And so, you know, we ask, ask that people do, do be respectful of those. Very important. The site itself is amazing. It has old growth trees on mm -hmm. it. It has the beautiful river. Um, a lot of people who go out there say, wow, I just have never seen anything like this. It doesn't look like Washington State, as if Washington is not beautiful enough, they say, but there's moss hanging from the trees that's reminiscent of Spanish moss in the south. There's oak trees out there. There's old growth trees out there, abundant wildlife out there. And uh, it's a wonderful site. We just opened it last year. Right. Uh, and it was at the end of the year. It was in September. And so we had real heavy use in September and October. And then we tailed off a little bit during the off season. And now that we've had the nice weather upon us, a lot of people showing up out there again. And uh, it's going to be a very popular park for us. Uh, I was there for the opening, and it was mm -hmm. September, and it was hot. Mm -hmm. And up at the top where you park, uh, you need to climb, I guess, descend mm -hmm. down into towards the falls, That's right. uh, where the water flows through the gorge and That's such. Right. And the temperature dropped accordingly because it, right. because it's treed. Yeah, it's beautiful, but it's a climb all the way back up again. That's right. So how do folks navigate that? Because it was a dirt trail at the time, or dirt mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if, if uh, the county has done anything to that, mm -hmm. to improve that or not. I don't know yet. We, we, we have. We uh, uh, did some work with the road, the main access path. It looks like a road going down in there, but it's gravel, compacted now and very smooth. Oh, we, we have benches placed periodically up and down that, lar that long Beautiful. walk now. So we yeah. have people that may want to walk a quarter of the way up and take a break. We put them under trees so they're in the shade, looks nice, they can sit there and enjoy the park move to the next bench and so forth till they get to the top. Um, it's about a half mile if you walk all the way down and all the way back up, um, half mile. We do have an area out there where you can access the river. So I mentioned the waterfall. You have viewpoints where you're at the top of the falls and then one kind of yeah, off to the yeah. side where you look back at the falls. We also have an area of the I didn't park. know about that. Yeah, we you're at grade with the river, and we have a lot of people who go in there and dip toes in the water and uh, um, actually access that cold water up there. And it is cold, even in August. And so, uh, word of caution to folks, you know, if they are going to uh, dip into the water up in there, it is abundantly cold, the water. I tell you, um, it is stunningly, stunningly beautiful. Uh, and exceedingly remote you bet. where it is. You bet. Uh, and to, before I forget, mm -hmm. we have on-site uh, caretakers yes, we as do. well. Yes, we do. Uh, but it is a gorgeous park. It is well worth uh, seeing, and I would almost call it a day trip rather than just go down there and take a look I and come back. Right. I, think, I think that's right. And uh, it takes about 45, 50 minutes, let's say an hour from downtown Olympia to get out there. If you go into Yelm to an area that they call Five Corners, that's a stoplight there uh -huh. in Yelm, to Bald Hills Road. And if you go out Bald Hills Road, eight miles, just stay on Bald Hills Road, and it is at the physical end of Bald Hills Road. There's actually a barricade in front of you that stops <laughs> the road. You're at the park. And we've done some improvements. We have signage, of course, out there that yeah. announces the park. 
We have a parking lot, we have some amenities, we have a little bit of landscape planted out there. Um, our real goal with that park was to not do too much. Again, it speaks for itself. We added the caretaker residence, and again, that's just operationally, we need somebody out there keeping their eye on things, opening and closing, closing. The, the gate. It does uh, allow us to not send staff out there every single morning, every single day, because of the long travel distance. Um, it's a real significant difference in city and county parks. Uh, All right, you, let's go there. Yeah. Let's it, do it. <laughs> I said it's about an hour out there. Well, we also, from downtown Olympia, say out on Eld Inlet at Fry Cove Park, it's going to take you about 30 minutes to get out there from downtown Olympia. So to Fry Cove? The, for, to Fry Cove Park. And very so, northwest. Very northwest, yeah. um, out on Eld Inlet. And uh -huh. so again, there's about an hour and a half's worth of travel. And our staff does that. Um, they travel all over the community from the tip of the county in the Bald Hills all the way to Eld Inlet out there in uh, uh, Franco Park. And so, uh, so yeah. How, how many miles, roughly, between Olympia mm -hmm. and beyond mm -hmm. and um, Seattle? 60. How many miles between... Deschutes Falls Park and Fry Cove. Sixty, Very, in round numbers, yeah, yeah, it's about and the same. And our staff hits hit the parks and are charged with a park staff mm -hmm. with maintaining the parks mm -hmm. on a routine, regular basis. Mm -hmm. How many and, and all the other parks in between? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot more than Kennedale sure. and Burfoot, sure, as well. Mm -hmm. How many park staff do you have? We, we have four full-time staff, including four. myself. Four. Counting you. Counting four. me, and so we have three permanent maintenance four. staff. Four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we, uh, we cover a lot of ground. We wear a lot of different hats. Yes, we do. And I'm uh, typically not out there as much as uh, the maintenance team, so we have three maintenance people that are really moving through the community and taking care of all these facilities and 36 miles of trail corridor, which that's, a, trail that's corridor. a pretty big park. Um, when it comes to <laughs> maintaining a trail system, it's a lot like road work in a lot of ways in that we have signage, we have intersections with mo motor vehicle traffic, we have striping on the roads, we have parking lots. It's also like a park. We have trash cans, we have restrooms, we have information centers, amenities like benches and so forth out there. We have viewpoint decks for people uh, to use out there on the trail system and stop and look at a lake, look at a pond, things like this. And uh, so really the trails are, uh, they're a linear park that operate much like a roadway system in a, in a lot of respects, mowing them, for example. Well, if we're mowing 36 miles of trail, that means 72 miles by the time we go up one way and down the other. It's a tall order to keep those things in May in Olympia, Washington, uh, keep the grass Manicure. and the blackberries off off the trail. Yeah. That's a tall order. Yeah. So for three it's expected, guys, big challenge. But people understand the, uh, the massive order that is. It's a big challenge for us. Big challenge. Uh, and I want to get to dog parks, but mm -hmm. I want to ask since we have four mm -hmm. uh, f full time, mm -hmm. counting you, parks mm -hmm. employees, mm -hmm. uh, how does that compare with the the cities of Olympia, Lacey, and Tumwater? And I don't know which ones. I know Olympia does. And I'm not sure the other two do have parks district yeah. where they pay a fund, mm -hmm. the, tax, or the, right. the residents pay into a, a fund for that. That's right. Olympia has a metropolitan park district. Um, and then Lacey and Tumwater do not. But respectively, uh, Lacey and Olympia have approximately, I'm using round numbers here, between 20 and 25 full-time maintenance staff for their 20 system. 20 and 25 full-time staff for the yes. city parks. Yes. Each. Yes, that's correct. Any idea what Tumwater has? About 18, so maybe just short of 20. Okay, and well, how many do we have? I forgot. Four. Four, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. With massive driving in between, Absolutely. and I'm not complaining. Yeah. It's it's a money, money. it's a uh, budgetary issue. That's right. And it has come up, do we want to we want to revisit that, the idea of a parks district uh, in in the, in the county? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a tough sell. People's expectations versus what they're willing to pay for, mm -hmm. versus do you charge everybody uh, the same amount, or That's how right. do you ferret That's that right. out so it's equitable? Yeah. Uh, it's a very tough, 
tough, uh, tough decision to make. It really is. Um, it, it goes to the vote of the people. Yeah. Whether they want to tax themselves for a metropolitan parks uh, district, it is a wonderful funding source. Um, uh, we're not inventing this process. Many different jurisdictions have done this and put a park district in place. And that allows for a designated funding source that has to go for the care and the maintenance of these parks right. facilities. Most of now, this wasn't foreshadowing. I just want people to know this is not a foreshadowing yeah, conversation right. where standby, it's coming. Sure. Sure. Um, but it's just something we need to discuss because I, it comes up in the budget every I, year. I, How I much can we support so. and as a commission? We want to support the parks mm -hmm. and, and the trails as such. You bet. And I think it's, it's fair to note that almost all of the grant opportunities that we have available to us are for the acquisition of property or the development of property, which is great. But then what comes next? Not the operations Somebody and has to do the maintenance and operations, and that's where things get difficult is the M&O. Yeah. And so a metropolitan district uh, does allow for, again, a dedicated funding source to go towards that. Um, I think people would really notice and appreciate the difference, you know, if we did have a dedicated funding source. Um, the Thurston County Commissioners have been wonderful, this board, working with us, oh, and we you. appreciate the support of the Thurston County Board. We really do. Um, it's very evident to me that this board it takes great pride in our parks and trail system and really sees the value in that for the people who live here and the people who visit here. We are the capital county. We have a lot of visitors who come to our region. And when they're here, that's one of the things they do. And uh, it's very evident to us that the Thurston County Commissioners have great value in the trails and parks. Thank you for saying that, Carrie. I, I really appreciate you that. Bet. But it, it's painful. True. It comes in. We're coming into the budget season now. It's just painful to see sure. the reality of this. You bet. Uh, you bet. And balance that with what the public want, balance with what we all need mm -hmm. to maintain, mm -hmm. environmentally as well, but also with what people are, are willing to. Mm -hmm. to spend you bet. on a regular basis. You bet, you bet. Let's, let's shift to the dog park. Sure. Uh, now, the dog park is out at the work, or the mm -hmm. waste... Waste and recovery center. And recovery, the, mm -hmm. the dump. We all yep. call it the dump. Yep. Um, and uh, how long has that been uh, in it, operation? It, it opened in 2010. Um, and so so, eight years ago. Yeah, why is it out at the work, the Waste and Recovery Center? Because it used to be a dump. That was when it was an active landfill. They're actually taking trash and refuse and, and burying it out there and creating a landfill. Well, that, that has been completed, meaning it, it's not an active landfill. It's a transfer site, so people bring their uh, refuse in there and then it transfers to different locations. So where the dog park is built is considered on a closed cell. Mm -hmm. That's an area that's been covered with a membrane. It has all of the required uh, elements in it to make sure that it's safe and operates well with the, anything from gas lines that are part of a, a, a recovery center uh -huh. operation to the water and so forth. Um, and then they put a membrane over it, and then we have soil. Well, it's a great secondary use. It's a, it's a reclaimed use of the site, essentially. It has adequate parking, and we have a footprint of, uh, of ground that's uh, uh, adequate for, for dog use. And uh, people love it. It's the only one in our area right here. And um, one of the things I hear all the time is that it's separated, and we have small dogs and large dogs. Sounds like a small thing. It's Real big oh, no, thing to the dog. It's a major. <laughs> it really is. Especially if it's a small yeah, dog. Absolutely <laughs> so. And so um, it, it opens at 7 o'clock in the morning, and it's open till dusk every day as well. And uh, people bring their dogs out from, I know, Lakewood, so outside our region. Wow. But certainly from all over our region, people visit the dog park. Certainly there's a charge for that. No, no way. No, no charge. No, no, no Good, charge. No charge. No charge. No charge. You're not going to get me on that one. <laughs> no, I, I've <laughs> talked with, uh, what, how, what's the size of it? I think it's about two acres worth of ground that's covered out there, but I could be mistaken out there. Um, okay. I, and, and my details may be a little bit lacking because of this one element, and that is that it, it is maintained, that site, by the WARC staff. So they have their own staff out there that do all of the operations of the transfer site, and one of them is the operation of the dog park. So oh, okay. we talk right. with our partners out there, and, you know, it's still called a park, so it's on the park's website. Well, that's because we want people to be able to find 
find it logically. If they look for, hey, where's the parks? Well, they look up parks. Well, the dump the dump right away. Park. They're not yeah. going to look out there. They're going to look at parks. And so we have some uh, knowledge of the operations of the park, of course, because it is a park in our region. But the day-to-day -day operation is handled by the work staff okay. out there. So I, I've talked with several people that utilize the park. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you like best? What do you like least? Uh, and, and any suggestions? Mm -hmm. And uh, what they love is, like you said, the separation between the dog sizes. Mm -hmm. That was very important to, to, mm -hmm. uh, to them. Mm -hmm. Very important. You bet. They love the fact that it's close enough. Uh, that they go out and exercise their dogs and watch them interact socially with other dogs mm -hmm. when they get home from work. The dog, dogs have been kenneled up all day or mm -hmm. in the yard all day. They have to get out and, and exercise, run and play. Mm -hmm. They also like the fact there's sufficient uh, fresh water out there for yeah, the animals. Mm -hmm. um, and a sufficient supply of those lovely colored poop bags. Yes. They, yes. they never seem to run out. That's right. And yeah. I'm sure people take them and put them in their pocket uh, or on the dog leash, little buckets or right. in their purses or backpacks. That's I'm right. sure that happens too. So I'm glad that that is being maintained as well. Yes. They had an area of suggestion or concern and that was the footing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the footing, and I, I haven't seen it so I don't know, mm -hmm. but it would get uh, uh, like stuck inside the dog paws mm -hmm. and or the dogs playing and running around picking up stuff, whatever mm -hmm. would, would uh, get it in their mouth and ingest it. Yep. And so I know what I told them. What would you suggest? Well, I would suggest that that's something we probably could and will improve upon in the future. Um, we've heard this too. So okay. we think it works as a dog park right now, but like with any park site, does it need further improvement? You bet, sure. And so we, we really value input from people. Uh, they're the eyes and ears ultimately. How is the facility working for you? What are you seeing? What's good? What's bad? We really value that information. That's very informative to us to make plans for the future. So if this comes to us as a concern, for example, that's going to move up in the priority list. And as funds become available to add amenities or just upgrade the park, that's going to be right at the top. And okay. so it's not done. Um, None of our parks are done. They're constantly changing, um, and they, they, it, it, that's for different reasons. Some because of in, environmental conditions, some because of the type of use, the volume of use, things like this. We talked about urbanization in our parks. That changes the dynamic of how the park is used a little bit, and we need to be prepared to change to meet that need, and uh, um, the dog park is, would fall right in with that. It's a great facility, really is. It was needed in our region. It's heavily used for our region. Um, needs improvement, yes, like all of our parks. We need to keep building that and to meet the need. Um, but we see that being a, a long-term uh, facility for the public. So we're gonna wrap up now, mm -hmm. but we're gonna talk about trails again, but mm -hmm. this is a different trail. It's not the Chehalis okay. Western Trail. It's the Ralph Monroe uh, Trail. Yes. Tell us, please, about that, because we just had a recent dedication just a couple weeks ago. We sure did. And, uh, and I'm going to be heading out there momentarily. It, it was, has formerly been called, kind of informally, uh, the McLean Trail. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, roughly, it's near Mud Bay Road and Delphi Road, the intersection there. There's the McLean Elementary School is right in the area. If you And the it, fire department. And the McLean Fire Department. Yeah. So McLean, McLean, McLean. That's one of the reasons it was, it was, boy, we need a name change out here because yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion. And then further down the road, we have the McLean Nature Trail, Nature which, Trail is which is run by the state. It's phenomenal. It's a state it, park. It it's, is a state it's park. beautiful. But it adds to some confusion for some folks. And so um, what we've done is we rededicated that trail in the name of uh, uh, Mr. Ralph Monroe. Mm -hmm. Um, and it runs roughly two and a half miles from Mud Bay Road towards the Evergreen State College. Mr. Monroe was integral in the design, the development, the maintenance of that trail. He still helps all the time. He's a tireless advocate for trails and, and, and really the youth of our community. He works with McLean Elementary students, and I'm sure he'll mention this, that he, yeah. he holds that in the highest regard. They hold and him it comes in from the highest his heart. regard. Absolutely. Yeah. Very genuine. And uh, it, it was a ple has been a pleasure and was the ultimate pleasure to be able to name that trail corridor in the name of Mr. Monroe. He deserves it. Um, he's done a lot of work on behalf of the citizens of this community. Well, he, he's going to talk about that being an educational trail as mm -hmm. well for the kids. You bet. You bet. And however many thousands or tens of thousands of trees 
you he has bet. planted out there with the kids. That's right. And when you walk into a classroom, the kids just light up. That's right. Mr. Monroe. That's right. For over 20 years. Yeah. And they. His first year kids were adults with kids. Absolutely. And he's had them out there planting trees this big, and now they're bringing their kids through, and they're 30 feet tall. These trees. And uh, he, he had me out there two, three weeks ago <laughs> planting a tree. That's right. He's good at what he does, <laughs> and what he does is he really facilitates <laughs> this. And he gets a lot of participation. And uh, he's done it for over 20 years. He's still out there doing it today. Um, he loves the kids. The kids love him. Education, my gosh, yes, they have interpretive signage out there to show them what kind of different native vegetation we have out there on the trail. And uh, the kids just get a ton out of it. It's a great facility. And you know what's nice uh, and humbling about uh, former Secretary of State Ralph Monroe is he's he has done so much work out there with the kids and it's such a passion for him, mm -hmm. but he's not out grandstanding and, and look at me and bloviating and patting himself on the back because everybody else is doing that on his behalf. Out of, out, of, uh, out of, I mean, it's genuine, genuine uh, uh, praise. Absolutely. Um, it's hard to find its equal, as an example, yeah. whereas uh, people feel mm -hmm. like uh, the person is, is truly genuine about their passion and their concern for what they're doing. And he sets the bar. Yeah, he does. Uh, I'm gonna be heading out there to meet uh, with uh, Mr. Monroe. Okay. And uh, we'll be doing that just coming up in just a few moments. But I wanna thank you, Carrie, Carrie Hebden, Parks Manager. Uh, thank you very, very much for taking all this time you bet. with us this afternoon to, uh, to give us a brief, not brief, but a, uh, a really good look at our, all of our parks and trails to include the dog park. You bet. Uh, and again, you, you can find information on the trails by going to thurston-parks.org. That's correct. Uh, and the phone number one more time, it's gonna scroll at the bottom of your screen, it's 360-786-5595. Perfect. Carrie, thank you so very much. Thank you. And enjoy your vacation when it comes up. I will, thank you very much. Thank you. You could not script this weather any better than for this, than for today. Right now I'm sitting about, or we're sitting right in the middle, almost in the middle of the Ralph Monroe uh, Trail. And uh, I'm grateful to have uh, former Secretary of State Ralph Monroe here. Thank you so much for coming out uh, to, to do this. And I have permission to call him Ralph. I'm not being disrespectful in doing that, although it feels odd to me. And uh, to his right is Bob Barnes, a retired landscape architect from uh, uh, with the Department of Transportation, who's been exceedingly, exceptionally involved and advocating and getting this trail going along with, uh, with Ralph. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here today. And what I'd love to hear from you, Ralph, or what we all want to hear is how this came to be as briefly as you can. Sure. I know it's a long history to it. Uh, and then uh, eventually it'll evolve into other topics, but how the public can advocate and support and help in our efforts and what we're doing here, what you're doing here. Well, this this has been just a tremendous experience. I mean, I can't really equate it to anything else. Uh, the local elementary school, McLean Elementary, is a fabulous school. And years ago, in 1992, the principal came to me as a school volunteer and said, you know, a lot of these kids come from apartments and from condominiums. They, they don't get any time outside. And what can we do? And so, we started looking for some vacant land and the county had this whole strip of property that was covered with scotch broom a mile high. And uh, we said, you know, if we get that scotch broom off, get this plowed disc, we could plant trees. And uh, so we did that. We, the local loggers came and helped us for free. We bulldozed all the nice. scotch broom off of here. They volunteered their time. And then we plowed it and we disced it. And then uh, we had the kids come uh, and they planted 16,000 trees on it. And this, those trees stretch all the way from, from Mud Bay Road to Evergreen uh, College. And then uh, we put up a sign that said the McLean School Forest and everybody <laughs> laughed because the trees were about this tall. They were, but they're not laughing now because the trees are 40 feet tall. Oh yeah, they're huge. And then we decided let's do some other projects. And so we started in on doing uh, wildlife ponds. And believe it or not, behind all this brush you're sitting by, uh, we have, we, there's ponds there that the kids designed. The kids had to design a pond with uh -huh. an island in the middle so that ducks could be born there without the coyotes getting them. And, uh, but the kids had to figure out how many square feet, how many cubic feet, 
the layout of the pond and so forth. And we named all the ponds after the teachers. Oh, so wonderful. this is Porter Pond and, and uh, there, every one of them's got a Miss Burkholtz, Burkholtz Bayou, and we try to figure out a name for each Burkholtz. one. Yeah. And, uh, and so that, you know, one thing evolved another, no trail at that point. And then uh, one day I was up here mowing between the trees uh, and I, I saw the Olympia or Capitol High School girls running team go running through. Uh -huh. And I thought, those kids are, you know, they're, they figured out there should be a trail here. And so we started to develop just a, uh, a trail with just uh, a cat <laughs> track, basically. Yeah. And then the county came through and the county road department has been just fabulous, the parks department. Yeah, good to hear that. And they are really good people. And they came through and they had a little extra money from some other trail and they were willing to pave this. Department of Transportation gave us some gravel. We got volunteers and we snaked it through here without cutting down one tree. And wow. uh, the county has been fabulous to work with. I cannot complain at all. And so- uh, and This goes back to the mid-90s? This 90s? is our 25th anniversary. Okay. And uh, now we have hundreds of people walking on this trail on a daily basis. Uh, we've run out of place to plant trees so now we plant daffodil bulbs, and every year where the kids plant about 5,000 daffodil bulbs on the parkway here at Evergreen Parkway. And of course the community loves that. And so it's been a great experience. Now, I've never been on the trail up this far, and uh, but I saw a bunch of birdhouses. Tell me about that. The kids are building the birdhouses uh, and bat houses and uh, <laughs> every, everything you can imagine. Uh, they've been involved in, in building or putting together to enhance wildlife. And so we've planted shrubs around all these, uh, all these uh, ponds. We've done everything we can so we can build more wildlife in the area. And the kids have just got a great learning experience. Most recently, the kids uh, took some of the bigger trees and we've estimated the age of the tree. We bored a couple of them. And then the kids went back to that date in history when the tree was a seedling oh, nice. and said, what happened on this, on this year? And so the, it was a history project. Uh, Port Blakely has, uh, Timber has been very helpful. They've been very cooperative. And uh, initially we planted the trees. Warehouser was very helpful. They've, they've all helped timber companies and, and the community. My gosh, this neighborhood has just uh, come together and really been supportive, so. Well, I was gonna ask you what kind of educational uh, uh, benefit there is to the children, but you've just said that. No. They're, they're doing research. The, they're learning history. Yeah. They're putting the history in uh, in paintings and drawings uh, with a little narrative. Yeah. I see those posted along the trail. Yeah. They're building bird houses, so that has to be structurally sound. Yeah. Not according to code, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and I see them erected along the uh, the trail. And this year we planted a lot of milkweed mm -hmm. because uh, milkweed attracts uh, monarch butterflies. Oh, beautiful. And so we had we grew milkweed throughout the winter, and then the kids planted it this spring and uh, we're going to plant more next year and so we want to try to help build bring back more monarch butterflies and so forth absolutely but beyond that these trails are phenomenal we had a man right over here in this neighborhood who had a stroke and his first day out on the trail when he got home he went 18 steps and the next day he went 20 steps and this is absolutely true next day he went 25 steps turned around back to his car and before we were done, he was walking a couple miles. Oh, and wow. it, it's, it's, it's flat, it's smooth, it's level, yeah, and it's, it's a rehabilitative level. tool. Uh -huh. uh, other kids use it as a bike path to get to Evergreen. Other people, many families walk their babies, you know, kids in strollers here. <laughs> uh, people run it for exercise. Um, We've had to dodge some people already. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just been a real community asset. The kids are also learning you said uh, when they're building the pond, they've got to do a lot of math yeah. and, and all that to figure all that out and acreage and, and yeah. But how many kids do you think have been involved from <laughs> the beginning to even just uh, three, three or four weeks ago when uh, uh, this was dedicated and changed into your name? Well, every year, every child at that school plants something, even if it's just a couple of daffodil bulbs. So there's been thousands. 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 Yeah. Thousands. And yeah. your first year kids are in their 20s now? Yeah, well, I was down at the bank one day and I was getting to cash a check and this lady said to me, and she said, uh, well, what can I do for you, Mr. Monroe? And I said, how do you know my name? <laughs> and she said, oh, I'm a McLean School tree planter. She'd been Aww. a tree planter when she's in the third grade, fourth grade. 
So, you know, they remember and they'll watch, they'll protect it and watch over it. And we've got parents and kids and grandkids uh, now uh, the same family have used the trail. So it's just been fabulous. That's beautiful. Now, Bob, tell, tell us briefly what, uh, what your involvement's been. Okay, uh, I was involved uh, with Ralph. He uh, asked our uh, region administrator if we would be involved uh, with this project. And uh, there was a safety concern over there. You were DOT then at yeah, that time? Yeah, I was with DOT. Okay. I was a landscape architect for DOT. And there was a situation where there was no fencing between the trail and the highway. And so Ralph asked our region administrator if he could help to support the uh, mm -hmm. installation of that fencing. And so we did that. And then uh, after that, then it was safe to actually to go out there. And so we had a number of students go out uh, plant trees uh, numerous times. Uh, it's pretty tough site conditions over there yeah. by uh, Arnold Lake. Yeah. But one of the beauties of, uh, of having that whole facility there is you can actually walk, instead of having to get on a school bus, you can actually walk from the school right to the lake. And they do a lot of uh, research right there, uh, science research, uh, math, uh, learn about plant material. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually get to install plants. So it's been a fantastic learning experience. And the beauty is you don't have to get on a school bus, yeah. which is really expensive. Yeah. Right, right. And it's hard to and, organize all of that. And there's so many different disciplines the, the kids are learning. Right. That's beautiful. That's just that's wonderful. You bet. Uh, and uh, uh, the trail runs. How is it seven miles? Uh, well, no, it's actually two or three miles if you total it all because we run up to the college and the college has trails on the campus. And down on this end, we run it all the way across Mud Bay Road and up around along the freeway and back down in front of McLean Elementary School. And the county is really progressive. They have a trails plan. And we, and in cooperation with the city and the counties and so forth, this Thurston County has been just fabulous. And, they, uh, the trail plan is the then next step is to take the trail across the street in front of McLean School and down through a city piece of property, Allison Springs, mm -hmm. and then we'll meet the state uh, highway that we have to get across uh, Highway 101. And the yeah, state yeah. of Washington has told us they'd help us do that. And then it's only a mile and a half to Capitol Forest. And that's our ultimate goal. And then back in this direction, our goal is to get in through Grass Lakes and back into the city this way. So it's going to eventually be a first-rate system. And there's just little segments coming together. OK. Yeah. So what, what can the public uh, that are watching this, what can they do to advocate and support and uh, further enhance or further along the projects? Well, I think, I think the public can, can you know, talk with their commissioners, talk with the parks people, uh, come up with you know, ideas of ways they, where, where they think we should do things. But just knowing about the trails plan and seeing where we have some gaps and help with those gaps, it's coming together. And you can actually, you know, it's not visible from the, if you and I are walking as much as it is when you, but you look at it on the map, it's there. And uh, so without any huge uh, steps that to be taken, the gaps get smaller and smaller every year. So we're very pleased with the way it's going and we'd like to move it faster, but everybody would like to move something faster, I'm sure. So, yeah, but faster is yeah. not always better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One piece at a time. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, number one, if you haven't taken the time or you can't find the time to come out here and walk the trail, do it. Just make it happen. It's just a decision. Because once you do, your life will be changed coming up and down uh, the, the path and the trail and seeing what, uh, what has been done 40-foot trees, even the small ones uh, that we just planted uh, a few weeks ago yeah. uh, that aren't very tall right now, but they're going to be massive yeah. uh, someday soon. Yeah. And come out and enjoy the ponds and sit uh, where there's benches periodically and enjoy it. Just hold it here. So we want to thank you and thank the commissioners and the previous commissioners. Everybody's helped with this. It's, just it's been, been a project all along the way. It's really yes, been it great. Yeah. Well, Mr. Secretary of State. No, it's Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, thank you so much for this, taking thank the time you. to do this. Uh, you too, Bob. And, and thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this over the decades and, uh, and, and bringing this to fruition. Good. All the work you've done and all the positive ways you've uh, uh, mentored the children. Well, wow, great. Beautiful and young adults. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I'm out here with Trevin Taylor. He works for Public Works. He is a senior environmental um, 
coordinator, coordinator uh, doing work with uh, the trails and doing work with the uh, the salmon uh, passage barrier removal enhancement, yep. enhancement. Okay. and we're actually out on the uh, Chehalis Western Trail over Spurgeon Creek Correct. and so if you want to know what the county's doing leading in the state with fish passage burial removal you're gonna hear it now you're gonna learn it now and tell everybody we have over 200 salmon and uh, passage culverts that are basically recognized uh, through a basically very cool data system that takes into account everything from factors from uh, potential habitat gain, mm -hmm. um, salmon versus resident uh, cutthroat and trout versus um, also does it take into account safety and also um, road enhancement issues. So we got a point system. And the beauty of that system is, is that basically we can also tweak it. So in this case here, we made sure that when um, the board granted us the money to go forward with fish enhancement, we tweaked it to where basically these are true fish enhancement projects. They're not uh, transportation projects in disguise. These are actually improving some of the worst spots in Thurston County. And actually this summer, I'm proud to say we're going to put into place five sites and four of them actually were in our top ten. And do you have any idea where Thurston County is in uh, in barrier removal, salmon barrier removal, uh, as compared with the rest of the state. Well, I, personally, I we're we're, I mean, having to brag about ourselves here a little bit. We're leading the way in a lot of ways, and uh, to the point where I have other counties getting a hold of us to try to model their their programs after ours. Um, the database is huge. The fact that we've incorporated prefabricated uh, bridges and structures that basically are huge cost savings versus individually built, individually designed sites where we can use them is a huge savings. And um, really the extent, the, the extent of the um, research that we put into each one is, is, is probably ahead of the game of a lot of people. The fact that we've, before we go out there, we've been able to check each one in the field and really have some sites that, that have some bite for the dollar. That's beautiful. Uh, Trevin, thank you so oh, very, thank very you. much. And uh, I just want to add that uh, if any of you, ladies and gentlemen at home, uh, or students, whomever's watching this, want to know where leadership is when it comes to uh, fish barrier removal, it's here in Thurston County. And you can let everybody know, uh, to include our local newspaper, because apparently they don't, they don't know. So uh, thank you so much for what you're, uh, what you're doing, your thanks whole team. Us. Please pass uh, our thanks on to them. I uh, greatly appreciate every effort you're making to enhance our habitat and uh, remove the fish barrier. Oh, thanks for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Today we explore just a few of the beautiful parks and recreations Thurston County, your capital county, is home to. And looked at how Thurston County is leading the way in removing fish passage barriers for salmon. Get out and explore the beauty of Thurston County. And be sure to stay tuned to Thurston Community Media and the county's YouTube channel for a television special about fish passage projects and other great information about what's happening in your community. Thurston Community Media, it's local. Thank you.